First thing I'm doing today is going to be installing some barn wood for an accent wall. I've got to get that done before I can get going on the staircase. You can see here, here's the barn wood. I've got three different colors in a different ratio. So that will all be installed up this wall. And then after that, I can get my skirt boards, null posts and all that in. Now, the first thing I need to do is figure out where the top of my first piece is gonna be. So what you need to do is figure out what um, height your material is. In this case, it's six and three quarter, which is a little bit of an odd situation. So I'm gonna, multiply six and three quarter by an even number let's just say it's 24 or whatever and then that'll be the top of my first piece it's never perfectly tight with this type of material so by the time i get to the top it's going to grow higher not shrink so if i go exactly six and three quarter times whatever even number it'll still give me a little bit to scribe off the top the other thing I could do with a material like this, you can see I've got a nickel gap in here. I could actually give this an intentional gap or I could put it together tight like that. Um, I think I'm gonna try and go tight because I want to nail through the tongue on this. And if I try to give it a nickel gap, I'm afraid I'm gonna see the nail heads and I don't want that. So a couple notes on getting started. I changed my mind. I think I am gonna try and do a slight nickel gap, maybe a 16th of an inch. I think it'll actually make for a better install. So I take six and 13 sixteenths multiplied by 25. You can see I've got my construction app on my calculator right here. Six and 13 sixteenths times 25 equals, not that, six inches, 13 sixteenths times 25 equals 170 and 5 sixteenths. So next thing is I take out my trusty laser. I'll link this in the notes. And normally you would hit the button and your little red dot shows up and you hit the button again and it tells you what the measurement is. There's another function that'll do a continuous tape measure. So you hold down the red button here and now it constantly spits out measurements and tracks what the measurement is. So it's easy, rather than trying to hold a tape up 170 inches, I can bring this down until it says 170 and 5 sixteenths, and then I can mark the bottom of the laser, and then you can see I've got this line leveled across here. So then whenever you're done, just hit the red button again and you're back to uh, normal mode. The other thing I need is the rake angle of this stair. That way I know what to cut my angle at on this bar wood. So to do that, I just put my longer level, my short level on top of it, and it's gonna spit out my measurement of 33 and three quarter degrees. If you subtract that from 90, 33 and three quarter. That's gonna be 56 and a quarter degrees. And that's what that angle will be cut at. So as I'm getting started here, I am using some adhesive on the back of these starting pieces. I really wouldn't have to do that. Um, I was getting some good contact with the nails. Uh, I'm using 15 gauge nails. Two inch or two and a half inch will work. You just want to make sure you're not hitting pipes and over penetrating. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. They gave me a ratio of three different colors of wood with like 18 pieces, nine pieces, and four pieces. So the trick is to try and keep that ratio the whole way up the wall with things still looking somewhat random, even though they aren't random. Now in regards to cutting these pieces, you can see on the left side I'm butting that right up against the drywall and on the right side I have the rake angle. So on that left side where I'm butting up against the wall, I'm actually putting a five degree back bevel on that cut. That way it'll slide in nice and tight to that drywall. Now I had considered using the HKC track saw to do that rake cut. 
But honestly, with my 12-inch DeWalt miter saw, I can do that 56-degree cut just fine on the miter saw. So that's what I did. And really, I blew through this little area and was done with the rake cutting in pretty short order. So no need to get overly complicated with it. After getting through this lower portion of the wall, I had to decide what kind of trim piece I wanted to use to terminate the barn wood on this outside corner. My millwork supplier sent along some 1x4 and it's just a little bit thicker than the barn wood. The barn wood was about 11 16 and the trim board is 3 quarter, so I'm going to tackle that next. These pine 1x4s that they sent out are incredibly twisty, curvy, wonky, and everything in between. I actually had four of them sent out and only one of them was halfway decent to use. So, anyways, here I have to try and uh, follow along the contour of the drywall. Not too big of a deal. I start at the top using some 2.5 inch 15 gauge nails to really get it pinned tight to my framing inside the wall. And then I just kind of push and pull the 1x4 to get it even with the outside of that corner bead. So here's what we got for a termination here. Keep in mind I've also got a, a cathedral barn beam running across that end right there that has to come down into that. So I wanted to try and keep this transition flush if at all possible. So barn wood will just butt right into this the whole way. And I usually try to avoid situations like this, um, but it is what it is. They'll just have to tape this and paint it and it'll be fine. Here's kind of a quick look at progress. You can see I am utilizing gaps in some areas. In this case, this piece has a big bow in it, so I'm tight on the both ends, but I've got a gap in the center. So I'm just trying to kind of uh, keep making it look rustic and making sure that I'm continuing level as I work my way up. I failed to mention it previously, but you do want to mark all of your studs. That way you're nailing into solid framing inside the wall and not hitting water lines and whatnot that might be running throughout the wall. There's nothing really overly magical about this process as far as uh, kind of going to town and nailing this stuff up. Main thing is you want to just keep staggering your joints and breaking up your color pattern. As you can see that dark uh, grayish black color, I've got a higher proportion of that. Uh, and then medium on the gray and then much less on that very light gray color. So just trying to keep those proportions even and making it look uh, like the homeowner's inspiration picture. Thank you, Pinterest. All right, well, made it to the light switch and it's time for my lunch break. But a couple tips before that. You noticed before I was using the level and leveling up marking studs. For that, just use my stud finder here. This will be listed in the video notes. Pretty awesome. Shows you right where everything's at. <coughs> Another note, super annoying trying to mark your cut lines with a little, uh, what is this, nine millimeter mechanical pencil. Lead constantly breaks. I like to keep the um, Pika pencil, which is a big fat pencil and it marks things really nice. Also, whenever I go and do things like write on the floor or mark studs on the wall like this, you get a nice big fat piece of lead and you can just go to town versus constantly, you know, dealing with breaking lead and whatnot with one of these. So recommend most, both of those. I'll list those in the notes below, and as always, that helps to support the channel. One other tool you wanna have, and most of you probably know this if you've ever installed tongue and groove anything before, but this is tongue and groove pine. So if you are hitting this with a steel hammer, it's gonna, and you have to kind of wail on it a little bit, it's gonna damage this tongue, and it's gonna make it really hard for your next piece to go in, and it can cause a lot of headaches. So I highly recommend using a rubber mallet and that way you can go along and uh, you're not as likely to damage anything.
And one other note before lunch, you remember I tried to measure up and make so that this would come out with close to a full piece. So now that I'm over halfway, let's track our progress a little bit with that. So I just measured and I've got 74 and three quarter inches from the ceiling to the top of my tongue. And if you remember, I'm figuring six and 13 sixteenths uh, face value on this. So I did the math already, uh, 74 and three quarters divided by six and 13 sixteenth equals 10.97. So then if we take, a, so that's perfect. If we take 11, which would be 11 full pieces times six and 13 sixteenths, that is 74 and 15 sixteenths. So we're literally gonna end up ripping off about 3 sixteenths once we reach to the ceiling. So I'll keep tracking that as you know I, I go up, but that's perfect. That way we finish with a nice full piece and it looks nice and well thought out like we actually know what we're doing or something. So time for lunch, we'll be back. Oh, the joys of working over staircases. Uh, I hadn't really given any thought to what I was going to use as far as a platform or ladder system to get this stuff installed uh, before I came to work that day that I was doing this. But as you can see, I'm kind of hodgepodging it a little bit. I've got my six foot step ladder set up on the platform and my 10 foot walk plank for my scaffolding on top of that. And it's working pretty good actually. Um, Gonna get a little sketchy as we keep going, but uh, I sometimes fail to plan a little bit. You just kind of figure, you can always figure things out on site, and um, that can get you in trouble sometimes. So probably better, probably better solutions I could have come up with for this, but this is real life, and I want the channel to be about real life carpentry, not about fake stuff. So this is what I actually do for a living. If you've ever been on a 10 foot aluminum walk plank, you know that it gets pretty sketchy as far as the flex and twisting in the center of it. And uh, as I tried to go up further on my little four foot ladder, I realized this was a bad idea. Um, definitely too much wobbling going on. So I went out and got my trusty telescoping ladder, which has been a lifesaver so many times. And that's why it's always got a place in my van and uh, ended up using that to finish up the wall. As you can see here, once you get a few rows down from the top, you wanna start measuring and making sure you're on track um, to come out right with your top piece. And here I actually had more space than what I thought I was going to, so I'm leaving a decent sized nickel gap in there, and that's gonna allow me to finish this off with a full piece on the top row and I'll just have to scribe a little bit off the end all the way down at the end where the drywall corner bead got taped in and uh, dropped out of level a little bit. Well, there she is in all her barnwood glory. Got her all done. Okay, I'm gonna start the uh, stairs next. Should be pretty cool. Give you some close-ups. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, ask any questions in the comments section. I'll try and answer any questions you have. And you can support by buying tools through the affiliate links in the notes on the video or visit my Amazon uh, storefront which has tons of cool lists of awesome tools. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.